So, hi, BookTube. Hope you guys are doing good. So today I'm going to show you guys my favorite books on Buddhism that I have. I, there are five of them and I actually special ordered a few of these because they're like really hard to get. I think one or two of them I actually had to wait three months on thrift books to actually find a copy of it for sale. Um, so let's get started, shall we? Uh, first one is the Dhammapada. Um, Wisdom of the Buddha, which is right here. This is a Dover Thrift Edition. I don't personally like this edition because the print is so small. But, here's the back. Uh, if you're going to study Buddhism, in all honesty, I'd probably tell you to start with this book. About 99% of the quotes you see on Facebook with a Buddhist quote that says it was Buddha, if it actually is Buddha, is from this book. Um... I like this book because you can literally open it at any page at random like this and just pick something like uh, chapter 13 do not follow the evil law do not live on in thoughtlessness do not follow false doctrine do not be not a friend of the world uh, so it says right back here a few of the sacred texts of the world's great religions present their wisdom with the clear simplicity of the verses of the Buddhist Dhammapada or path to virtue. Its direct style, clarity, and beauty place it at the forefront of Buddhist sacred literature. And its noble intent raises it to the highest level of humanity's spiritual growth. Guides, not growth. I'm... <coughs> These ancient texts transcend the limitations of time, tradition, and culture to express the ethical principle underlying all wise and compassionate philosophy and conduct. Here are the four truths that reveal the nature of the world and our lot in it. Here also is the Eightfold Path, the way to enlightenment. Incorporating the means to overcome the essential suffering revealed by the four truths as the essence of life, the Dhammapada serves as a coherent summation of the necessities for following the Eighth Bold path as well as an encouraging and thought-provoking resource to consult along the way. This was three dollars. Um, this was translated by F. Max Mueller, which uh, you can get online. I don't believe it's copyrighted anymore. I think it was originally published in the 1920s. Uh, well, F. Well, no, what 1920s? F. Max Mueller died in 1900, so it is no longer copyright, but. We all know how that works. So, there's that. Of course, they copyrighted it because they had to put an introduction in it. But it was published before 1900. And basic copyright law says it's... Uh, Y'all know. Um, so, also, I love this one. It's by Santi Deva. A Guide to the Bodhisattva Way of Life. Once again, this is another book where you can just flip it open and point something out. Chapter 7, The Perfection of Zeal Thus one who has patience should cultivate zeal because awakening is established with zeal and there is no merit without zeal just as there is no movement without wind. Uh, chapter 5, verse 3 But if the element of the mind is completely restrained by the rope of mindfulness then all perils vanish and complete well-being is obtained. We'll get down a little further. For the propounder of the truth said that all fears and immeasurable sufferings arise from the mind only. So that's what the copy, this is my favorite copy. There's several on there. Some of them are more like university texts that read like a dry brick. But uh, the back states, it's under the philosophy, religion, and Tibetan Buddhism. That would be the subject matter. In the whole of the Tibetan Buddhist tradition, there is no single treatise more deeply revered or widely practiced than a guide to the Bodhisattva's way of life. Composed in the 8th century by the Indian Bodhisattva Santi Deva, it became an instant classic in the curricula of the Buddhist monastic universities of India, and its renown has grown ever since. Santi Deva's presentation of the methods to harmonize one's way of life with the Bodhisattva ideal begins with a praise of the spirit of awakening. The Bodhisattva's altruistic aspiration to achieve enlightenment for the sake of all beings 
In the chapters that follow, Santi Deva inspires the reader to cultivate each of the six perfections that provide the basis for the Bodhisattva way of life. Generosity, ethics, patience, zeal, meditative concentration, and wisdom. This authoritative translation by Vesna A. Wallace and B. Allen Wallace, both of which I think are doctors, um, is the first English rendering of the original Sanskrit that also takes into account the canonical Tibetan translation. And there's the bag. Um, it's written in verses, so right there as you guys can see. Um, if you're going to study Buddhism, Mahayana, this would probably be your best bet as a secondary start because this one is um, Theravada original Theravada text. So you see two different translations of two different traditions of Buddhism. Um, this one is by Nagarjuna. Uh, I do love it. It's got a, it literally breaks it. This is called The Fundamental Wisdom of the Middle Way. Nagarjuna's Mulapamada Hayamakakarika. Translations and commentary by J. L. Garfield. And I realized I probably killed that word. Because as you can tell, it's right there. So, if you can pronounce it, good for you. But I'd have to reread it a hundred times to pronounce it correctly. <coughs> um, this is written by a Buddhist saint, Nagarjuna, who lived in South India in approximately the 2nd century CE. So, we'll put him... Uh, I'm trying to think as far as people that were alive then. Blank. Is undoubtedly the most important, influential, and widely studied Mahayana Buddhist philosopher. His many works include texts addressed to lay audiences, letters of advice to kings, and a set of penetrating metaphysical and epistemological treatises. His greatest philosophical work, the Mulabad Yamakara Karika, read and studied by philosophers in all major Buddhist schools of Tibet, China, Japan, and Korea. So it's Mahayana. Um, I just described that earlier. Provides a clear and eminently readable translations of Nagarjuna's seminal work offering those with little or no prior knowledge of Buddhist philosophy a view into the profound logic of the Mula Mahayama Kakarika. He offers an illuminating verse-by-verse -verse commentary that explains Nagarjuna's positions and arguments in the language of Western metaphysics and epistemology and connects Nagarjuna's concerns to those of Western philosophers such as Sextus, Hume, and Wittgenstein. An accessible translation of the fundamental text for all Mahayana Buddhism, the fundamental wisdom of the middle way will offer insight to all those interested in the nature of reality. So as you can see, there's a really beautiful picture on the front cover. Uh, I got this from Thrift Books for about four bucks, and this was one of the ones I had to wait like maybe a month to get. As you can tell, it's pretty thick. Uh, it's definitely worth what I paid, and it sells for... $20 the Oxford University Press okay so this is book number three the other two are pretty cool I like too um, they're both Mahayana the only Theravada is this right here so um, Zen mind beginners mind informal talks on Zen meditation and practice by Shanrayu Suzuki so this is a, a really it's a very short read it only takes about an hour um, they're different lectures, so yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, let's see what the book inside of the cover says. Zen mind is one of those enigmatic phrases used by Zen teachers to throw you back upon yourself, to make you go behind the words themselves and begin wondering, I know what my mind is, you tell yourself, but what is Zen mind? So I'm probably not going to read the inside cover because it goes on like a book of psalms so uh favorite chapter in this is a chapter on transiency and it says all things are transiency everything's passing away which is true all religious traditions say that um not to waste your time in this world because maybe you, there's an afterlife and if there's an afterlife you might be wasting your time here chasing down material possessions which you can't take with you Oh, so yeah um, and this one it was impossible to find I, like one copy on eBay and there's definitely no way of finding it on thrift books because it was published in the 70s and it's almost impossible to find 
but thankfully I did eventually get a copy after waiting four months and it cost me like 12 bucks. Thinking that it's from the 70s, you guys are probably thinking, wow, you paid some, I forget, 15, whatever. I paid all this money for this book, but I love it to death and it was only published in the United Kingdom, so that can explain why it took so long to find a copy here in the States. And it's the uh, Wisdom of Tibet series, book two. The Precious Garland and the Song of the Four Mindfulnesses by Nagarjuna and the Seventh Dalai Lama. Foreword by His Holiness, the Fourteenth Dalai Lama. And in the back, it's translated by Jeffrey Hopkins and Ladi Rampochi and Anna, Annie Klein. The Wisdom of Tibet series, published under the auspices of the Dalai Lama, is unique in that each volume has been chosen by the Dalai Lama as revealing a true oral tradition. So he would have been probably in his late 40s, early 50s, as it came out. No, he'd have been in his 30s, because it's 2020 almost. Yeah. He's like 87 years old now. He's an old guy. Uh, don't get me started on Tibet. We all know that's a contentious issue between the United States and China, so... Uh, um, His Holiness the Dalai Lama was, has written a foreword to this volume and has imparted the oral tradition regarding these texts to the translator. These are one of those books, again, where you can just pick any random verse out and you always get something of value. Uh, chapter 5, the Bodhisattva Deeds, verse 410. Conceiving an eye through ignorance in the five empty aggregates, which are called the appropriation, is said to be the pride of thinking eye. Thinking one has won fruits not yet attained is pride of conceit. Praising oneself for faulty deeds is known by the wise as wrongful pride. <coughs> Excuse me. As you guys can tell, I have studied. I like to study Buddhism. Um, I also studied Western occultism, and it's been 15 years, 15, 16 years. I think I've studied it. Who knows? I lost track. Um, I probably in the distant future will put a video up about how I got started in the occult, how I studied the occult. I know it says, "Well, the occult it means hidden. Why aren't you hiding it?" I mean, it's 2020. What's going to happen? Beelzebub or? Uh, Archangel Michael will come over, come out through the door. Don't get me started on angels and demons, and I'm not talking about a Dan Brown book. That's kind of funny, I know. Um, I really appreciate you guys for watching this video and enduring the last uh, 12 minutes and 30 seconds. And it's greatly appreciated. So, have a good day. Feel free to share it. Please feel free to comment if you've read any of these books and your take on... Mahayana, Theravada, the different schools of Buddhism. Um, Shandrayo Suzuki was a Zen monk, so he was actually a really great teacher, I think in the probably 60s, 70s, and early 80s. Although I'm not sure, don't hold me to account for that. Um, so I will see you guys either Tuesday or Friday on here, so have a good day.